So as we all know, geometry is very popular on the SAT and it's one of the topics that students often struggle with the most. And even though the SAT is getting harder and harder every year, it requires the same set of techniques. That's why in this video, we're gonna go over three geometry questions from the official digital SAT. I'm gonna share with you some techniques that you want to be equipped with. Now, this video is not gonna take you to 800 overnight, but these things have been helping my students to hit 700 plus, and if it's been working for them, chances are they're gonna work for you. So sit back, relax, maybe take some notes with pen and paper, because that's the only way you're going to learn. Highly recommend that, and let's get started. Now, these questions are not hard by any means. They're like a medium difficulty questions at best, but what's more important is for you to learn the small things that you can apply to these questions and apply to your harder questions on your next SAT. It all spreads out and that's how you actually get better over time. So first question, a right triangle has legs with lengths of 24 and 21 centimeters. If the length of the triangle's hypotenuse in centimeters can be written in the form of three root D, where D is an integer, what is the value of D? So when it comes to these geometry questions, what you want to really do is visualize what the question tells you. And visualize is just a fancy word for drawing out what the question is telling you. Because when you read it, you kind of have an idea, but you don't have a solid idea. Because when you first read it, you might be like, mm, not really sure where to start. But when you start drawing things out and visualize, you tend to connect the dots and get to the answer. So we have a right triangle. So I'm going to draw a right triangle and it tells us it has a length of 24 and 21, so 24, 21, doesn't matter which one it goes to. If the hypotenuse can be written as three radical D, where D is an integer, what's the value of D? Now, the important part is that the question is telling us it's going to be a right triangle. So whenever it comes to a right triangle, the first thing you should think about is going to be what? Pythagorean theorem. Remember that? A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. The purpose of the Pythagorean theorem is for you to find the missing side length when it comes to a right triangle and right triangle only. So we have a right triangle right now, we have a missing side. So we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing length. So 24 squared plus 21 squared is equal to three radical D and squared. And now we have one equation with one unknown variable. And when you have one equation and one unknown variable, you can solve for the variable and get to the answer. So we're gonna square these two things. You can use a calculator on it. It's gonna be 576 plus 441 is equal to three squared D. So if we expand this out, you can use calculator on this. We're gonna get 576 plus 441 is equal to 9D. And when we combine, we're gonna get 1017 is equal to 9D. D is equal to what? 113. So again, rather a simple question, but here's what you need to take away from this question. So whenever you see a geometry question on the SAT and you're kind of stuck, right? Or you have no idea where to start, just focus on visualizing what the question is telling you. And visualize just means to draw out what the question is telling you. Right triangle, draw a right triangle. Mark out the measurements like we did over here and try to piece the information together. We are working with a right triangle, right? Right triangle, what do we need to think about? Pythagorean theorem. And the purpose of Pythagorean theorem is what? Is to find the missing side length of a right triangle. Not any triangle, but just a right triangle. So anytime you see a right triangle on the SAT, you either want to think about Pythagorean theorem or special right triangles. Those are the only two cases. I mean, there's also trig, but it's going to be obvious when you're working with trig. So if that makes sense, let's go to the next question. So the question says, an isosceles right triangle has a hypotenuse of length of 58 inches. What is the perimeter in inches of the triangle? So again, we're dealing with a geometry question. So the first thing you want to do is you want to visualize out what the question is telling you. So we're working with a isosceles right triangle. It just means it's going to be a right triangle and the side length of these two sides, that's not hypotenuse, is going to be the same. And the question tells us the hypotenuse is going to be 58. So it's going to be 58 right here and this is going to be unknown right there. Now, remember what I told you before, when it comes to right triangles, it's either going to be Pythagorean theorem or special right triangles. In order for you to use Pythagorean theorem, you have to know at least two of the three sides. In this case, we only know one of the three sides. So Pythagorean theorem is not going to work. So we have to think about special right triangles. How is that going to work out here, right? Well, we're working with isosceles triangle. And when it comes to a isosceles right triangle, there's only one thing that's possible. And that is 45 45, 90, right triangle, okay? And what we know about 45, 45, 90 is that they have a side length ratio that follows X, X, 
and x root 2. And because these two things are both isosceles triangles or two 45, 45, 90 triangles, we can apply the same ratio that we have on the hypotenuse. Because we are working with two isosceles triangles or two 45, 45, 90 triangles, we can now actually apply these side length ratios to this triangle and find out what the missing length is. So here's what I mean. This side is going to be x, this side is going to be x, and this side is going to be same thing as x root 2, right? Because they're both hypotenuse. And how are we going to find out what x's are? Well, we know that 58 is equal to x root 2, right? So 58 is equal to x root 2. How are we going to find out what x is? Well, we have one equation and one unknown variable. So again, similar to the previous question, we're going to isolate and find out what x is. To do that, we're going to divide by radical 2, radical 2. We're going to get x is equal to 58 over radical 2. And you see how none of them have radical 2 at the bottom of the fraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this radical 2 to the top by multiplying radical 2 over radical 2. If you're an accelerator, you learned that from the exponents chapter. And then we're going to get 58 root 2 is over 2, which is going to be the same thing as 29 over root 2. So now we know that x is the same thing as 29 root 2. So we're going to get 29 root 2 here and 29 root 2 over here. So now coming back to the main question, what is the perimeter, right? What's the perimeter of the triangle? Well, perimeter is sum of all sides. So this plus this plus that, which is going to be just same thing as choice C. So again, not the hardest questions on the SAT, but the main takeaway is whenever you're working with right triangles on the SAT, you are either going to think about Pythagorean theorem or special right triangles. And when it comes to isosceles right triangle, that is referring to 45, 45, 90, because that's the only time a triangle is going to have same length, same length, and a hypotenuse. So you really want to embed this inside of your head and think about it anytime you see a right triangle question. And next, you also want to know that whenever you're dealing with geometry questions, always, always, always visualize. That way you'll get a better idea of what's going on in the question and you're going to get to the answer even if you're lost. And now let's move on to the third question. The question says a circle in the xy plane, right? So a circle in the xy plane has a diameter of endpoints this and that. An equation with a circle is that right there where r is going to be a positive constant. What's the value of r? So switching things up a little bit, we're working with circles now. And here's what you need to know about these types of questions. See, we have a circle, not just anywhere, but we have them on a xy plane, which is just this, you know, x axis, y axis, that's the xy plane. And whenever a circle is on the xy plane, it's going to follow the equation of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. That's known as the equation of a circle. And the basics you need to know for the SAT is that h and k represents the center of the circle and r over here represents the radius of the circle. And because the question is asking what's the value of r, the question is asking what is the radius of the circle and how we're going to find that. And again, another geometry question, what do you need to do? You have to visualize what the question is telling you. So what do we have? We have a circle with a diameter at the endpoints of 2, 4 and 2, 14. So it's going to be 2, 4 right there and 2, 14 right there. And I can, hear, I can already see the comments coming. John, that's not accurate. That's not 14. That's not 4. How can this be 10 of a distance? It doesn't make sense when it's going to be 4 right there. Guys, listen. We are just trying to get an idea of what it looks like. We're not trying to get a perfect picture. We're just trying to roughly sketch things out. We don't have time to draw everything out accurately. If we did, SAT would be too easy. Anyways, back to completing our perfectly scaled drawing. Our circle is going to look something like this, which means our diameter is going to be right here. And what's the length of the diameter going to be? Well, we know that these points are both on twos, right? They're both on twos. And it's at 4 here, and it's at 14 right there, which means the difference is going to be 10, which means this length over here is going to be 10, which means your diameter, diameter of your circle is going to be 10, which means the radius, which is half of the diameter, is going to be just what? 5. So what's our answer? Our answer is radius is equal to 5, which means r is equal to 5. Our answer is going to be 5. So what you need to take away from this question is that whenever you're dealing with circle on the xy plane, the first thing you should think about is going to be this equation of a circle right here. You want to memorize that to the heart. If I wake you up at three in the morning and slap you in the face and ask, what's the equation of a circle? You should be able to say it 
within seconds. And what you need to know are the center of the circle and the radius of the circle from this equation right here. And lastly, if you're working with geometry questions, always visualize things out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as it gives you a general idea of what's going on, you're good. If you guys found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. But guys, what's important is that these questions are not hard by any means, but the hardest questions on the SAT, they're going to use the exact same strategy, exact same set of techniques that we have seen here and all the previous questions. So if you understand how to solve these questions, that's awesome. But if you want to go a step further and really boost your score increasing process, what you want to do is you want to really internalize these basic set of techniques that are universal when it comes to all the questions on the SAT. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.